You know, the mid-1970s was a weird time for the NHL in relation to promotion. They decided not to have any NHL reference in one of the biggest movies of the mid-70s, Paul Newman Slapshot, which kind of uh, was a parody of the goon era of the decade. They were uh, approaching Hanna-Barbera to create a character called Peter Puck, an animated uh, cartoon that would better describe the game. This happened around the time of, you know, Boston and the Flyers being more dominant. And this promotion, which seems on paper to be totally made up of bizarre. You know, you listen to that uh, PBS uh, uh, game show where they give you three scenarios, and one of the three is correct. Now, for a lot of people, uh, they wouldn't guess this scenario was real. Now, today in our vintage podcast, we're going to look at something called the Japan Coca-Cola Bottlers Cup, involving the two worst expansion teams of the 1970s, the Washington Capitals and the Kansas City Scouts. Now, today's uh, narrated part of podcast will be taken from a very excellent article by uh, the great writer Diane Doyle, uh, the Nova Caps uh, site. So it's called NovacapsFans.com. Now, according to the article, it was back in April of 76 when Coca-Cola decided to put together a four-game exhibition series in, of all places, Japan. The series was devised as a way of stirring up interest in hockey in the Oriental country. Now, the NHL, in their weird wisdom, selected the Capitals and the Scouts as the participants, as it was unlikely the either team would make the Stanley Cup playoffs for 75-76. Both year teams were second-year expansion squads and had been the two worst teams in the NHL for the 75 season. The Scouts went 15-14-11 and finished in the last place in the smite. The Caps did worse, of course, with 8-67-5 and last in the Norris, uh, which is still the worst record of all time in NHL history. Now, the two teams lived down to NHL management's expectations for the 76 season, with the Scouts finishing 12-56-12 and, and the Capitals improving by three games to 11-59-10. Now, bull records were the worst in the NHL by far, with Kansas City even going on a 27-game winless streak during the campaign. Now, the two clubs decided to embark on a 10-day, four-game tour of Japan, with two games in Tokyo and two games in Sapporo. The term itself costs a heavy sum of $400,000, and Coca-Cola of Japan reportedly forked out three-quarters of that amount, or $300,000. Now, tickets were not cheap, costing up to $26 American. Players of both teams receive twelve fifty plus forty five per diem, as well as their expenses being paid. The players' wives and girlfriends were also invited on the trip, a la Summit Series seventy two. Now Guy Chiron, the legendary former Hab who was playing for the Scouts at the time, said when it was a promotional thing, basically the two teams they selected to go there had it pretty well out of been pretty well out of the playoffs by a certain time. Being two expansion teams by January, February, we pretty well knew we weren't going to make the playoffs. So therefore, there was a lot of work to be done for passports and things like that. I am assuming that it was not a promotional thing by the NHL for Japanese hockey, and I think it was the first time the NHL ever went to Japan. To my knowledge, yes, there might have been some exhibition games involving Canadian or American national squads for the World Championships because Japan was part of the uh, the World Championship, uh, what do you call, lower uh, the division tournaments at the time. Now. Then Capitals head coach Tom McPhee expected his team to take the cup and made it known he would be disappointed if he didn't win all four games. Now, in my personal opinion, Washington was the better of the two teams. The talented forward Ron Lalonde said, right up until we left from, from Washington, we couldn't enter practice even though our season was over. We flew out to L.A. the night before and practiced in the L.A. Forum before flying to Japan. Now, uh, as soon as the Caps left in Japan, McPhee had a team practice. Uh, goalie Bernie Wolf commented about it. I'm not sure if Tommy was trying to impress anybody, but there was just a whole bunch of Japanese reporters and fans leaning over the boards with the cameras. And I remember the workout was so hard, a couple of our players actually puked right over the boards on the cameras. The Japanese reporters were holding. Now, uh, 
While the, key, the Caps were relatively energized and gaining momentum, the scouts had become to Japan demoralized. They had ended the season with a 27-game winless streak. There were also rumors that the scouts would move the, or the team might fold. But once the game started, the scouts played with intensity. Of course, they moved to Colorado as soon as the season was done. Now, again, the two games to support were supposed to be April 14th, 15th, and the last two games in Tokyo, 7th the 18th. Now, the games of support were held on the legendary site of the uh, Tushikasamu Ice Rink, which was the host of the 72 Winter Olympics. First game was held in front of 4,500 fans, and Mike Lampin of the Caps uh, recalled the atmosphere in the arena. It was really chilly, and also would remind you of your childhood days in some of the old rinks. Now, the Capitals led 2-1 early when forward Mike Martin scored, followed by a goal from Bob Sewall at 12-17 to put Washington ahead 3-1. Now during the second period, the Caps scored two more goals while the Scouts replied with one of their own. The final score, 5-2, and uh, Big Fee was disappointed that his team seemed to sit under a 5-1 lead. Now in Game 2, the attendance for the second game was down to 4,000 fans. Now, uh, jet lag was starting to remove, and both teams played a, a strong game. Steve Burbano of the score of Scouts scored to cut the Caps lead to 3-2, but during the third period, the Capitals scored three more, including two on a power play to uh, lead 6-2 and take the victory. Now, by winning the, the game, the Capitals were given cassette recorders as a prize. Uh, goals were scored by me and Jeremy, with two, Bob Sirwa, Tony White, Mike Lampin, Jean Lemieux, and Jean-Guy Legacy scored the other scouts' goals. Now, the games in Tokyo too, took place at Yo Yogi Olympic Stadium. The atmosphere was totally different in Sapporo, as there were American cheerleaders and U.S. Army brass band. Playing conditions arena left something to be desired, including poor ice, poor lighting, and boards that were much too short. Now, Wolf uh, said the arena was built on top of the Olympic swimming pool, so right above my net there was about two or three high <laughs> diving boards. There were puddles everywhere on the ice, and in other spots it was quite slushy, making an ordeal to carry her past the puck. Uh, now, Yvonne Labra said it was wet, swimming pool ice, the kind of soft ice slows down the game. You just can't carry the puck. Uh, when Lab was told it was a swimming pool on the rig floor, he said, thank God we didn't fall through, it was wet enough on the ice. The lighting was so poor, it was uh, hard for the goalies to see the puck speeding towards their heads. There were also no glass or screen to protect fans. Uh, Wolf remembers the rink as sort of like a boomerang. The net would go back and he'd throw the puck forward again, so he also had to be careful in a high shot that he didn't get the, the back of the head on a rebound. Now, for a game, that third game, there was 9,200 fans in attendance, including some North Americans. In that game, uh, number one draft pick Greg, Greg Jolie put the Caps ahead one nothing early with assists from Sirwa and White. Lampin scored before the midpoint of the first period to put the Caps ahead 2 nothing. The scouts then scored once in the first period and once in the beginning of the second, but the momentum didn't last long as the uh, Tony White... Harvey Bennett and Blair Stewart scored. Lampin had the uh, last goal, a 6-2 win. And the prize awarded at the end of the game was Japanese Geisha Dolls. Now, Game 4 was played before a crowd of 9,000. And like the prior three games, the contest did not go as well for Washington. The Caps fell behind 2-0 early. The Lampin cut the deficit in half. But the scouts scored once again to make a 3-1. Now, John Sire was there for the Washington Post described the Capitals play as lethargic and similar to being pushed around the ice like a car with a dead battery. The Capitals came on strong in the third as Jean Lemieux scored to reduce the deficit half to 4-2. Scouts goalie Denny Harrow for a future hab made many great saves, especially doing a 5-3 penalty kill to hold on for a Kansas City, City victory. After the game, McPhee chalked up the poor performance to the Capitals being hockeyed out. Now at the end of the game, the squads lined up after the contest to shake hands and the Capitals received the Coca-Cola Cup during a short ceremony. Lampin talked about a cup saying, what well, I remember of it was an almost old-fashioned B-type cup that was decorated with ribbons that dangled below the trophy, but it was nothing of great note. Brass, nothing fancy, maybe a little wooden base to it. After the game, both teams indulged in drinking the complimentary bottles of coals. Quote, now, an article that was posted uh, uh, at the time said the Washington Capitals recorded a unique NHL first when he took a 10-day four-game exhibition tour last April. 
Their partners were exhibition were the Colorado Rockies, then the Kansas City Scouts. The Capitals made a memorable vacation by winning three to four games. Uh, now, uh, the Japanese have promised to make the series an annual fair and are said to be looking at West Coast NHL teams as the next participants. But even if the Capitals don't return in the near future, the memories will last for a long time to come. Which is not true because I haven't really heard about it since it happened to be a blurb on my local uh, CBC uh, TV station. Now, the aftermath of this was quite interesting. The players of both teams got to spend five days in Hawaii at expense of the NHL as a thank you for going over. It turned out that 76 was, of course, the last year the scouts played in Kansas City. The team was moved to Colorado next year and renamed the Rockies. Now, they eventually moved on to New Jersey and became the Devils, where they become Stanley Cup champions. And, of course, the Jim Schoenfeld incident involving Don Koharski would make any New Jersey, Kansas City, and Colorado fan happy. Now, uh, Guy who uh, was playing uh, with the scouts for that series, we cut him a free agent as his contract was expiring after the 76th season. McPhee was so impressed by Chiron's play in Japan, and he decided he needed uh, Charlotte on the Caps for 76-77. As a result, he signed with Washington as a free agent on September 1st, 76. As compensation for signing Charlotte, the Caps sent Nelson Payat to the Scouts in return. Now, Eddie Bush, who was the head coach of the Scouts, advised him a bright feature for hockey in Japan, thanks to the success of the series. He sure go for baseball here. I imagine the time the Japanese will go for pro hockey. This is this story. This is how it all starts. While Bush's prediction has yet to come true, regular season NHL games were eventually played in Japan in '97, '98, and 2000. In addition, the uh, 1998 Nagata Winter Olympics were held in the country, which featured uh, dozens of NHL stars and the worst loss in Canadian Olympic history. Now. For me, the, the key one with this series, again, was the last caps for the scouts, but some of the most talented Washington players, Lampin, Sirwa, uh, White, Marson, did uh, did great over there. But the trophy itself, ladies and gentlemen, you see the photo, uh, not the greatest uh, celebration. And uh, there's no Coca-Cola logo on the, uh, the NHL uh, Japan series, uh, uh, you know, uh, cross sticks and stuff like that. And the NHL logo is a little bit off, but anyway, Diane Doyle, I read her stuff before. She's a very good writer. I compliment her and all credit goes to her. Check out uh, some of her work on the NovaCapsFans.com site. And again, all attribution goes to her. We do this narration as a public service. We're not uh, celebrating or putting down uh, what the mid-70s were in NHL. It's like anything else. In baseball, if you get one hit and every three times at bat, you're a superstar, and uh, it's only an extra fungal a week. So if the NHL wants success with this, sometimes the attempt is better than the result, and for that, they have my respect. Thanks for listening. Bye.